So once a year, the city of Indianapolis, Indiana becomes the epicenter of sports. Okay, twice a year. But this isn't about the 500, it's about another race. The scouting combine unofficially kicks off NFL draft season. It's a race for information, for positioning, for an edge. A year-long marathon of preparation turns into a sprint when the calendar hits March. And on April 27th, we're on the clock. That's me in the war room. But we'll get back to me in a moment. Back to the combine. Hundreds of the best college football players converge into be seen, heard, and tested. And dozens of decision makers from every team congregate for seven days in March to evaluate, debate, and negotiate. For most of the year, many of us scouts are scattered across the map like gypsies, and the combine is like one massive pit stop. I'm sort of like the crew chief for our pit. On top of my job as assistant director of college scouting for the Cardinals, you could say I run logistics for draft season. Here's our boss, new GM Monty Ossenford. Good luck trying to run him down this time of year. He's driving from seeing his family in Nashville all the way to Indy. Meet Kyle, our content producer. He's the guy trying to chase mine down. How you doing, for Kyle? At a diner in Kentucky. Monty, how we doing? Great. Good to see you. Good to see you. Because you can take the GM away from the scouting life, but you can't take the scouting life away from the GM. I flew home Thursday night, got home late Thursday night, and was able to spend Friday, Saturday, Sunday with my girls. Uh, was able to drop them off at school this morning, and the, the, the last couple of years that I, as I've lived in Nashville, um, it's an easy drive up to Indianapolis. I'll, we'll, we'll be here quicker driving it than I would. I'd have to fly and connect. And, um, I, I don't find uh, I don't find the drive. It, it reminds me back to my my day scouting on the road and 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 being out and and just uh, going from school to school. So it was an opportunity for me to get home um, to to see my family and to spend some quality time with them, and uh, then also just parlay that into an easy drive up to Indy to to get the combine kicked off. I think there's just there's been a uh, there's been a lot all at once. The NFL calendar doesn't stop just for us because we're we're trying to find a new GM, we're trying to find a head coach, we're trying to find a coaching staff. Like the NFL doesn't stop, and they don't they don't quite frankly the NFL doesn't care. Like we we have to do this, and we got to do it on on the run. But that's okay. We'll be fine. We're excited. We're excited about the challenge. We're excited about the opportunity. The scouting staff, they have been in place and they have been out, outstanding. They've been, they've been grinding. We, I put them through some, some long meetings and, and, uh, and Dave Sears, our assistant GM and, and Quentin Harris and Drew Grigson and Josh Scobie and, and Glenn Fox and all the other scouts, like they've, they've been great at, at helping, helping me get through this process and putting us in a great position. Uh, so there's, there has been a lot. I'm not, I'm not just kidding. There's been a lot, but the reason why I do all this is, is for my family and, and um, to have them a part of it and feel a part because there is, there is much a part of this as, as anybody. And finally, to the crew sitting down here in front of you guys, they have been with me every step of the way and we have bounced them around, moved them a couple different places, and I can't wait to take this next step in our journey. My wife is, is unbelievable. She, she runs our house when I'm gone. She's the reason why I'm able to do what it is that I love to do. And, you know, even before that, my, my parents were the ones that instilled in me uh, the, the importance of family and the importance of spending great time together and vacations when you got a chance to take a vacation. And, you know, it was, it was, it was my birthday the other day and, and, uh, I got some people, hey, what'd you do? Did you go out? Did you have a great dinner? And, and it was, nope, nope. We, we sat on the couch and we watched a movie and it was, it was, it was awesome. Happy birthday to you. Cha, cha, cha. Ooh, la, la. Bye, chicken. <laughs> what advice would you give yourself when you first started working in the NFL? I think, I think for young people starting out is to, you know, it's, it's, everybody's in a hurry and I want to achieve this level or this title or, or this responsibility by this certain date. I think whatever, whatever job you're given, no matter what it is, is to do it, do it as well as you can, 
as quickly as you can and be prepared to do the next thing. I actually had this this talk with my daughter the other day and she, you know, she's playing her club volleyball and she's she's enjoying that and she's really into it. And thankfully Shannon is is the is the volleyball expert. She was a she was a co- collegiate volleyball player at, at LSU itself. So Shannon reminds me of that all the time. Her Division One athlete in her case, at the time I was a Division Two athlete, probably the lowest rung of Division Two. And she also, I will say this, she also claims that she's six feet tall, but uh, probably a couple years into us dating, I'm like, there's no way you're six feet tall. So I, I got out the uh, the combine measuring tape and I put the put the T-square on her head and she uh, she's officially 5'11", 7", which means she's 5 feet 11 and 7 eighths of an inch. And so she always claims six feet, but I that's one thing that I can immediately correct her on <laughs> and let her know that she actually is officially 5'11", 7". So. <laughs> You know, today was a today was a tough goodbye uh, with my girls. I, I was able to drop them off at school, and in the end, this is an important this is an important week for our evaluation process as we get ready for the draft. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to grow and to, for all of us to learn from each other and and to go through this. And, and we're excited about the challenge. The combine is like a study in human behavior and the arc of saying something while saying nothing. I don't know, I mean, um, 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 and, uh, and, um, you know, we just gotta be right on the people that we bring in to help our team win. There's another side to the combine, especially for us this year. It's really the first time our new people will all be in the same place. Here's coach Jonathan Gannon, AKA JG. You'll learn that he's a morning guy, a Gannon ball shot out of a cannon. He likes to hit the gym for an early workout, even on the road. We stick to our routine, so it doesn't change when we go to Indy or the Combine, no matter how late you stay out. His new coordinator is now have to love mornings, too. Cool. All right, let's roll. I'm going to say about three words on this walk. <laughs> These two guys behind me, I don't really quite know if they're ready to match my intensity right now. I can promise you we're not. We're going to find out. I have the same process that I go through since I was scouting. You know, I kind of use the same process that I use now. And it's a fun time because you get to meet a lot of the guys for the first time. And this is really our first introduction to the, to the players. Hopefully some of these guys are going to be Cardinals. Heads up, heads up, pull, pull. Oh, whoa. Maybe we should backpedal and Grayson yeah. should walk that way. I mean, get our quads activated. That actually would probably get your quads activated a little bit. I would fall over, offensive guy. You know, Nick in the first defensive staff meeting mandated seven to eight hours of sleep and work out at least four times a week and their jaws about dropped. Healthy coach thinks better. A coach that thinks better coaches the players better. When you work with different people, you see who has the capacity to do the next job and have more responsibility. Three hard steps, that's all we need is three hard steps. Drew always stuck out with me. Just saw him take over different various roles and you know, our relationship that we forged back in Minnesota, it was very clear that he was the guy that I wanted to give him the reins to take over the offense and run the whole show. I started working out with JG, probably our second year in Minnesota every morning together. He just told me what time to be there. Didn't ask what I would do until we got there. Come on, let's walk across this way. Drew likes to follow whatever Nick and I do. Nick's a tad stronger than I am, so <laughs> we got to modify the weight a little bit. Oh, and he's only a stronger tad? than I am because I'm older. A tad is inaccurate. With Nick, when he went to Minnesota, Mike Zimmer said, hey, Jonathan, this is a guy you need to talk to because he is way better than you. Then I had the chance to actually hire Nick in Philly, and uh, he did a good job for two years, so pulled the trigger, was convicted, and that's how I came up with these two. Did we just go the wrong yeah, way? Yeah, we gotta go this yeah. way. I don't know, you know um, I just I, followed I you. I thought we were finishing your promo before we... Uh... <laughs> There's not going to be a lot of competition in this workout. But yeah, There's I not going to be. I mean, look at how cocky this guy is. He's unbelievable. 
there's gonna be a lot of competition. Great. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of good relationships and friendships start with competition, especially in this arena that we're in. We're all nice guys, but at the end of the day, we want to kick people's faces in, so. The belief in him as a person, the kind of coach he is, the way he interacts with the players. There's not gonna be a person in the building that doesn't love JG because he lets them know that whatever their role is, is contributing to the success of the team. Human interaction, day-to-day -day interactions from JG, they're real, they're authentic, and that's why people gravitate towards JG. And just watching how he does his job and how good he is at it, and then certainly just the type of person he is. When you get the opportunity to join somebody like that, you're gonna take that opportunity. That was a huge critical piece for me when assembling a staff was, do you really ultimately care about the player first? There's an old saying, you can't stay out all night and hoot with the owls and expect to get up and soar with the Cardinals, it would be now. So you gotta wake up and get after it. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We'll see you. Have a good day. For our staff, this year's combine is where we begin building relationships that will be the foundation for what we believe will be a winning culture. We've got terrific people, some new and some old. But back to business at the combine, and Indy's like a Chili's. It's where business gets done. Ask any front office person and they'll tell you the workouts, the weigh-ins, and physicals are window dressing. The most important business at the Combine are job interviews. Each team gets 45, 20-minute sessions with players of their choice. These are the formal interviews. There's also the informal interviews. More on that in a moment. Let's introduce Assistant General Manager Dave Sears as he treks to the suite at Lucas Oil Stadium to prepare for our formal interviews. Dave was the longtime director of college scouting for the Lions. Look at the blue on that tie. Meeting him is the guy who now does what Dave did for years, former Cardinals player and current director of college scouting, Josh Scobie, a fierce competitor with a smile that moves mountains. Hey, Josh. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, brother? What's up, man? Yeah, how you doing? You want, you want to watch film? Dave, what'd you think about his... Uh... <laughs> yeah, put it on. <laughs> All right, so Coach, Coach Gannon's going to come in along with Monty. We'll have the coordinators, either Drew or Nick. And then we have area scout, regional scout. We'll have Josh. We'll have Ryan Gold, who's our assistant scouting director, Drew Grigson, Quentin Harris. So, uh, you know, we'll kind of fill it in with a lot of personnel people, coordinator, head coach. Yeah, um, it's really an opportunity for us to get to know the player and obviously know what his football intelligence is. And I'm the doorman, you know, so when anybody comes to that door, like I like to grab them or I like to, you know, nudge them just to get a feel, again, just to get a response. If you're uptight and whatnot, I like to kind of get you loose and kind of get you going so we can get the best information. Dave mentioned he scouted you. <laughs> yeah, I overgraded him, no. <laughs> going through the process, uh, you, know, I, you know, I knew he scouted me. And, and so I, you know, going through the, we're going through our scale and I asked him, hey man, you know, what'd you give me on your, on your new scale? You know, what kind, of, what kind of player did you think I was? You know, so he gave me an honest answer, which is fine. And I'm, I'm an honest person, so I, I can receive, you know, hard criticism, but again. He's, it, still, he's still better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we okay on time? Uh, yeah, we probably should start wrapping this up. Josh, you want to clear the room? Or? Yeah, I'll usually get the door and I'll get it for you guys right now. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thanks a bunch. The week follows a similar pattern. Informals during the day, formals at night, and workouts in between. The workouts are where we all assemble. Because who doesn't need 20 sets of eyes on workouts we'll watch five times on tape? Catch y'all later. All right, Fonzo. Yeah. Yeah, just help me understand something. Yeah. Who's the club interview coordinator? So I'm the club interview coordinator. You are? Yep. Yep. 
do? All right. What does that person do? So basically, if we have um, a guy that misses his formal because they couldn't make it for some reason, we have one person who's designated as that person that will basically help it get rescheduled. Okay. So we work with the with the people who run the combine to make sure that that player, he could be a variety of reasons. It could be he ran long at medicals. It could be like you know he had an off the field issue that brought him away from the combine. We'll work with NFS and the combine to get that guy rescheduled. All right, help me understand the informal interviews because I went down there and it looked like the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, that's like, basically. What, what, how does that work? Yeah, and so it's... Like, a, Yep. It looked like there's like four substations. Yeah, that, the quads they call them. Yep. Okay. And so it would. Quads. Yep. Within each quad, they have four teams, and okay. within each quad, you basically you're going to have a rotation of players. The job of the informals is more or less to. We have guys, the scouts are in there to be quote unquote runners, okay. and what they do is they're essentially getting in line for the players to get in line for our coaches to interview them. Okay. So there's a lot of that kind of jockeying back and forth. And a lot of that is, is to like, okay, we're in line. We're the next guy up for this player. And then when that player is done with X team, the Cardinals are up next, that, that scout will bring them to our coach to interview. And so it's basically like a mismatch of just doing that the whole time. Okay. Yeah. So you have like a lot of position coaches down yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. So it's um, we basically have four scouts and we have a position coach represented for every position that's down there. Have you ever seen like arguments or fights? Oh, of course. Oh, really? yeah. Oh, yeah. It's controlled chaos down there. And it's, uh, I think it's inevitable when, you know, you get that many people in a close room and they all got to get their work people. done, competitive people, and they all got to get the, you know, they, every every team has a, a certain amount of players that are required to get done. So you only have a certain amount of time with those players in that informal. So you got to get to them when you when you have a chance. And that's why it gets a little bit crazy yeah. at times. All right, last question. Yeah. Do you have like? Do you ever track your steps? I have not. I have not, and I wish I did. I wish I did because it would it, it would you we'd be hitting the threshold every single day here, um, whatever that is, ten thousand steps or so. About. Oh I mean, God. Yeah. And we're going to blend all that together to paint a picture of the player and what they are for, for the Cardinals, both on and off the field. Cardinals with the third pick in the draft. More draft coverage leading up to the draft in late April on azcardinals.com. That was awesome. Great. Thanks, guys. What do the next couple of weeks look like? You know, we'll continue to evaluate tape. We'll evaluate tape from the combine, the pro days, uh, and then we'll, we'll finish uh, just six-week sprint to the end here, figure out, uh, figure out who the right guys are.